Welcome back to our science class. Today we are going to learn a new chapter movements in the body. Students open your textbook at page number 134 chapter number 9 movements in the body. Shall we start the topic? Yes. Yes children. One of the main feature of the living organism is the ability to show some movements okay so we are going to learn about that movements in body clear so let us learn about the mind map first so what do you mean by movements movement is nothing but the one of the main feature of living organism and that is their ability to show some or other kind of movement for example if you are just closing and opening your finger that is one example of movement is it not so that's what that's what about movement and one more thing that is locomotion locomotion so what is this locomotion it is one similar term it is one similar term okay so it is similar to movement but there is a slight difference what is that locomotion is a type of movement where an organism can change its place so by doing that movement it will it can change its place it can change its place for example walking swimming crawl crawling so many things okay so this is what about locomotion then next thing we are going to learn about movement in earthworm snail fish birds snakes and human beings clear then we are going to learn about the structure and function of skeleton the structure and function of skeleton so about the structure we are going to learn about skull rib cage backbone or spine limbs joints different types of joints and then under function we are going to learn about movement of bones clear so let us learn one by one yes children now let us learn about movement so what do you mean by movement movement is nothing but the one of the main feature of living organism it is one of the main feature of living organism so we are going to learn about movement in animals okay so animals can move from one place to another it can move from one place to another is it not yes so for example it can move their fingers it will nod their head it will eat it will move from one place to another and dot is it not so that's what next thing is about plants so what about the movement in plants will it be there listen plants cannot change their position this is in general is it not it cannot change their position then they are fixed they are fixed then for example one plant name to be as tashmi not plant is there tashmi not plant so this plant can close its leaflet when touched can close its leaflet when touched certain type of flowers can open and close according to the time of day some flowers will bloom at evening is it not so like that also plants are there so it's a sort of movement is it not it's blooming it's a sort of movement that's what so this is what about movement now let us learn about locomotion what do you mean by locomotion locomotion the type of movement where an organism can change its place is known as locomotion children locomotion and movement both are similar but to some 
slightly slightly on difference is there in between these two terms so what is that once again i repeat the type of movement where an organism can change its place is known as locomotion what do you mean by that see in case of movement if you are moving your fingers that is one example if you are nodding your head that is one example but in case of locomotion by doing this movement there will be a change in the position there will be a change in the place that's what said to be as locomotion clear so it propels themselves from one place to another it propel themselves from one place to another locomotion is nothing but the movement of a part of the body which leads to change in the position and location of organism okay so the entire thing by doing this movement the entire body is getting the place or the position of the body is getting changed here for example by means of walking running jumping crawling climbing swimming the initial position and the last position is getting varied is it not so that's what about locomotion clear children yes now children an activity for you all so you can notice so many movements in your body is it not like blinking your eyelids heart beat you able to write stand walk jump dance so many things you can do is it not so you just make a list of movements that you can do and forward it in your class email id students you all can see the picture that is figure 9.1 movement in earthworm so what is this this is earthworm is it not yes so you can notice the whole body of the earthworm so they have shown in different angles okay so this earthworm body has mainly an elongated body elongated body but no bones or limbs is it not yes they having ring like segments ring like segments that have muscles clear yes now let us learn about earthworm yes children now let us learn about movement in earthworm okay so earthworm has an elongated body with no bones or limbs it has an elongated body with no bones or limbs so it does not have bones or limbs then the body has many ring like segments you can notice that in the picture is it not it has many ring like segments that have muscles that have muscles so each and every segment is having muscles it moves from one place to another how it is moving it moves from one place to another with the help of them with the help of the muscles only with the help of the muscles they are able to move from one place to another the muscles help it to contract and expand its body providing a push how it is moving it's moving by means of a push it's moving forward is it not its body providing a push that helps the body to move forward that helps the body to move forward so children it has special bristle like structure called seta where it will be it will be on the underside of its body underside of its body okay then so these are used to grip the ground they are using seta to grip the ground okay so to move forward 
to move forward earthworm to move forward what it will do it uses the seta to fix its rear part to the ground what do you mean by the word rear is nothing but back back part of the earthworm okay so to move the back part of the earthworm here it is using seta clear then if then it then uses its muscles to extend the front of its body okay first to make a grip they are using the uh, rear part and then it uses its muscles to extend the front of its body next it fixes the front part and then pulls the rear part forward this is how they are moving clear this repeated expansion and contraction of its body help to move clear children yes yes children now you all can see the picture of snail is it not yes figure 9.2 movement in snail so we can see the snail picture a snail has a slimy body without bones and a shell for protection it has a pair of tentacles with eyes at the tip of its shell clear children yes now let us learn about movement in snail yes children now let us learn about movement in snail so about their body structure snail has a slimy body without bones and a shell for protection clear then it has a pair of tentacles with eyes tentacles with eyes at the tip of its shell clear then it moves with the help of the muscular organ known as foot so it moves with the help of the foot okay it makes wave like movement by expanding and contracting the muscles in the foot clear once again it makes wave like movement by expanding and contracting the muscles in the foot then it also secretes a slimy substance known as mucus so in which way it will be helpful it enable the snail to move easily to move easily clear so this is what about movement in snail dear children now you all can see the picture of fish is it not figure 9.4 movement in fish so here the body of fish is specially designed for swimming clear then its shape is like a boat or aeroplane which is thicker in the middle thicker in the middle and tapers at both ends tapers at both ends what do you mean by the word taper getting reduced at both ends so such a body which is thicker in the middle and reduced size or taper in both the ends is said to be as a streamlined body clear yes now let us learn about movement in fish yes children now let us learn about movement in fish okay so as i said the fish body or the body of fish is specially designed for swimming it's specially designed for swimming then the shape the body shape is like a boat it's like a boat thicker in the middle and it tapers at both the ends or it reduces its size in both the ends 
such a body is called streamline body such a body is called streamline body then this shape allows allows water to move easily around the body clear and offers least resistance to its flow it offers least resistance to its flow then it swims primarily with the help of the fins with the help of the fins so fins or you are used here to maintain balance and to change the direction of the fish okay and then the fin uses its tail fin or it's also called as caudal fin okay so what for they are mainly using to push forward through water to push forward through water they are using tail fin clear yes children so the fish uses its tail fin its tail fin from side to side okay so this zigzag movement pushes the water and propel fish forward so that it is moving forward clear it also has sac like structure and its body called as swim bladder it also has a sac like structure and a swim bladder is attached to it so this swim bladder is filled with air and keeps the fish afloat keeps the fish afloat clear then the body of fish is covered with scales it's covered with scales and then it moves with the help of tails it moves with the help of tail so this is what about movement in fish so children as of now we have learned movement of earthworm snail fish clear yes yes children now let us learn about movement in birds okay so then most birds can fly most of the birds can fly it can even walk hop or run is it not yes some birds such as ducks geese and swan can swim in water it can swim in water birds have a streamlined body okay which makes is easy to move in air to move in air then birds have bones is it not the bones of the most birds are hollow they are hollow hollow that is it makes the body lightweight and fit for flying the hollow bones which are present in birds makes the body lightweight and fit for flying clear then heavy body birds there are some heavy body birds such as ostriches penguins and emu which cannot fly it cannot fly the four limbs of birds are modified to form wings the four limbs are modified as wings modified to form wings for flight for flying okay then the body is covered with feathers birds body is covered with feathers it also keeps the bird warm while flying at a height so the feathers is automatically keeping the body warm is it not it also keeps the bird warm while flying at a height the chest muscles are very strong okay so that it will enable the birds to flap their wings while flying clear so this is what about movements in birds yes children next let us learn about movement in snake so snake will 
crawl on the ground is it not it will crawl on the ground in a wave like motion in a wave like motion it have a long and strong backbone clear then with interconnected muscles with interconnected muscles the backbone of snake is flexible clear so this is what about movement in snake yes children now let us learn about movement in humans so what is there in human being which is helpful to movement nothing but skeleton and muscles is it not yes the skeleton and muscles are involved in both locomotion and movement clear so in which way it is useful what do you know about human skeleton human skeleton is the framework formed by the bones of our body so it is nothing but the framework of bones it's made up of bones okay then the skeleton of a normal adult human is made up of 206 bones how many 206 bones clear apart from bones and muscles they are also having cartilage ligaments tendons and joints okay all these things form part of the skeletal system clear yes next thing is about their function what about the skeleton function so it provides shape and support and holds the body upright clear it gives a shape and support and holds the body upright or straight okay then it helps in the movement of various parts of the body we are able to move our hand leg is it not that's what so for that movement of part of the body skeleton is helping clear then it protects the internal organs we are having internal organs like brain kidney liver so many things is it not so here this skeleton is protecting the internal organs clear then the skull protects the brain ribs protect the heart and lungs and so on clear so this is what about the function of skeleton yes children now you can see the model of skeleton okay so the skeleton has mainly four parts what are they skull backbone okay and then rib cage and then limbs these are four limbs and then hind limbs hind limbs clear so about the skull skull has in total 22 bones okay so out of 22 14 or in the front part of the face and rest eight or in the upper part of the head rest eight bones or in the upper part of the head clear and then next thing is about rib cage rib cage has totally 12 pairs 12 pairs of bones clear so the front part is connected here to the breast bone and the back part is connected to the back bone the rib cage bones front part is connected here and back part is connected to the backbone clear and then this is what about backbone you can see the picture of backbone clear and one more thing the last two ribs will not get connected with the front bone that's what these two ribs is said to be as floating ribs floating ribs and this is backbone and this is what about limbs four limbs your hand and hind limb your legs clear yes children 
now as i said skeleton has mainly four parts what are they skull backbone or spine rib cage and limbs so let us learn one by one so about skull what it will do it will protect our brain it will protect our brain okay and then totally skull has 22 bones how many 22 bones so out of 22 14 form face face bones out of 22 bones 14 bones form face and rest eight bones are present in upper part of the head they are present in the upper part of the head okay and then most bones of skull are fixed clear this is what about skull next thing is about rib cage rib cage so it has totally 12 pairs of ribs 12 pairs of ribs so totally it has 24 bones total 24 bones it forms a cage like structure it forms a cage like structure that's what said to be as rib cage okay and then rib cage has flat thin and curved bones it has flat thin and curved bones then it's joined with backbone all the 12 pairs of ribs is joined with backbone at back so the back side it is connected with backbone and then it's connected breast bone it, the ribs are connected with the breast bone in the front clear then the last two pairs are not attached in front that's what said to be as floating ribs the last two pairs alone will not attach in the front part and that ribs is termed as floating ribs clear yes children now about rib cage so what does this rib cage will do rib cage protects important organs such as heart and lungs as well as parts of stomach and kidneys clear so this is what about rib cage next thing is about backbone or else we can also it is also said to be as spine okay backbone or spine it is also known as spine or vertebral column clear it runs from base of skull to the lower back so where it is actually it runs from base of the skull to the lower back and forms central supporting rod for the skeleton clear then this backbone it is made up of 33 small bones 33 small bones and they are called vertebrae they are called vertebrae we are able to bend and twist that is only because of the presence of this vertebral bones clear so vertebral column or spine that's what about backbone or spine yes next thing is about limbs four limb and hind limb so limbs are mainly useful to perform various types of movement which helps in the various types of movement okay so they are totally having some number of bones so what are they they are having one long bone in the upper arm they are having one long bone in the upper arm the bone is termed as humerus bone it's said to be as humerus bone clear then they having two bones in the lower arm they having 
two bones in the lower arm so that is said to be as radius and ulna clear next thing is about the longest to bone of the body the longest bone of the body do you know where is the longest bone of the body yes that is our thigh bone thigh bone okay so it is also said to be as femur bone femur bone clear then there are two bones in our lower leg there are two bones in our lower leg so what are they that is the tibia and the fibula tibia and the fibula clear so it's mainly useful for doing various type of movement clear yes, children now let us learn about joints okay so what do you mean by joint a joint is a place at which two bones meet and join together where where two bones meet and join together is said to be as joints clear then two bones hold together with the help of an elastic bands said to be as ligaments clear and then the joint is covered with a substance said to be as cartilage clear yes so basically there are three different types of joint how many three different types of joint what are they they are immovable movable and freely movable joint so what do you mean by immovable joint it do not allows any movement immovable it do not allow any movement so this joint will not allow any movement then what do you know about movable joint what do you mean by movable joint it will allow only bending and rotation it will allow only bending and rotation clear the third type of joint is said to be as freely movable joint freely movable joint so what is this it allow movement in all direction it allow movement in all direction clear so again this freely movable joint is further classified into four types what are they ball and socket hinge joint pivot joint and gliding joint so let us learn one by one first about ball and socket so what do you mean by ball and socket here basically there are two bones two bones one bone act as like a ball one bone act as like a ball what it will do that will fit into your cup like another bone cup like structure into an another bone okay so that's what ball and socket okay say for an example if you are having a ball okay and if this is a cup which is an another bone it will go and fit so you can move your bone here cup bone here which is which will get fixed with the it will uh, it will this ball bone will go on fix with your cup bone so that we can freely move this ball bone say for an example our movement in hand so we are able to move our hand is it not front back circle is it not we can rotate it clockwise is it not an anti clockwise but not completely it won't come out is it not so this type of joint is said to be as ball and socket joint clear children yes now about the second type of joint that is hinge joint hinge joint what is this have you ever notice door how it will move back side and front side is it not it will always move in one plane is it not that's what it allow movement only in two direction that is either backward or forward backward or forward and then upward or downward is it not so it always this hinge joint always move in only in one plane 
okay so for example door clear yes now about the third type of joint that is pivot joint pivot joint what is this pivot joint so here there are basically two bones one bone will act as like a cylinder students you can see the picture there are two bones one act as like a cylinder and other one will act as like a ring okay so the cylinder fits into the ring the cylinder fits into the ring the ring rotates around the cylinder the ring rotates around the cylinder can you tell one example for pivot joint yes that is nothing but your neck see children you can how you can move your neck like upward downward left right is it not but not you cannot completely rotate it clockwise and anti clockwise and all is it not so that's what neck movement is one example for pivot joint clear children yes now the next part next type of the joint that is gliding joint gliding joint so what do you know about gliding joint here the bones have flat end and can move from side to side as well as back and forth how it will move from side to side as well as back and forth children you can see the picture here there are two bones there are two bones so one kept over other basically they are flat end flat end so what it will do it will move from side to side we can rotate side to side and back and forth clear for example see here you can see like this so if i am able to move like this so this is one example for gliding joint okay and back and forth like this so this is one example for gliding joint okay so for example this movement will take place in ankle and wrist joints where ankle and wrist joints see we can rotate like this back and front is it not like this also but not completely it won't come out is it not so this type of joint is one example for gliding joint clear children yes children now about one more type of joint that is fixed joint okay so what do you mean by fixed joint bones in our head are joined together by fixed joints where bones in our head they are an example for fixed joint clear they cannot move they cannot move they will be fixed that's why it's said to be as fixed joint clear yes next thing we are going to learn about movement of bones movement of bones so here muscles are attached to bones by a tissue called tendon what do you mean by tendon muscles are attached to bones by a tissue called tendon clear children yes they work in pairs to produce movement which one tendon tendon will work in pairs to produce movement to produce movement what do you need tendon clear yes then this tendon can pull the bones but it cannot push them it can pull the bones but it cannot push them clear then the muscle called flexor there are two muscle the first muscle is said to be as flexor this flexor muscle will contract and pulls the tendon to bend a joint what it will do this flexor muscle gets contracted gets contracted and pulls the tendon so that it pulls the tendon to bend a joint so that it bends a joint okay and then when it relaxes again when it relaxes the other muscle call extensor one more muscle said to be as extensor is there what it will do when this 
first muscle get relaxed automatically the extensor muscle will pull another tendon to straighten the same joint till that the joint will be in a bent position when this extensor st start it pulls another tendon automatically it will straighten the same joint clear so this is what about movement of bones yes children now about the last part of the chapter that is x-rays so what do you mean by x-rays the image of the bones is visible through this x-ray clear the image of bones in a living being is visible using a special radiation known as x-rays clear they are special rays that can pass through soft tissues but not through the bones so it will pass through the tissues but not through the bones clear so it is creating out it's making out an image an image is created that reveals the nature of the bone so that it's creating out and it shows the nature of the bone hence an image is created that reveals the nature of the bone clear bones are seen as white shapes against a black background white shapes against a black background clear children so this is what about x-rays children with this we have come to an end of this chapter so after watching the video just read the chapter thoroughly so that you can understand well clear children yes let's meet in the next class thank you all